What's up, y'all? How's life? Back at it again. Another art and talk show. Episode 11. I'm quite tired, I must say. But what's good? Hey, hey, hey. Hi there. The, the fastest my guest has ever come onto the show, I must say. I like to be prepared. <laughs> I appreciate you. So uh, for those who are jumping on, you guys know how this, guys and ladies, sorry, you know how this show goes. I will be doing the art, and they will be doing the majority of the talking, but of course I'll be conversing, going back and forth, uh, whatever the case may be, but I'll be doing my art, and they will be doing a lot of the talk. So, with that being stated, of the questions that you do have, since, um, you know, this is probably about 40 minutes to an hour long, if we don't get to them in the comments, because I may not be looking at the comments at the same time as I'm doing the art, we will respond back after the video is posted through virtually commenting, all right? So, um, today we have a local a small business owner, and also he has a lot of different perspectives on life as well to go ahead and present to you today. So I'm going to let her introduce herself to my lovely audience. So go ahead. All right. So my name is Michelle Jones, and um, I do live and work here in Osceola County. And in addition to my day job, which is Monday through Friday um, at the courthouse, I uh, coordinate some programs through the courthouse. But um, in my free time, I have a small business uh, called Shelly's Jellies. And so I make and sell handcrafted jams and jellies um, here in Osceola County. Um, I do have, uh, have a question, though, uh, before we really get this rolling, um, AC, what, uh, what are you going to be working on this evening? Oh, uh, <laughs> I've never been asked before, actually. But today I'm actually working on a commission piece. I'm going to be doing Etta James. So she's an old, an old time singer. Jazz singer. Mm -hmm. yep, yep. So I'm doing Etta James, and um, she's. I love, I love Etta James. Uh, yeah, she's awesome. So yeah, I'm be doing that today. That's what I'm doing. So that's a commission piece you're saying. And yeah. um, what medium are we working with? Acrylics. Yeah, acrylic art. Uh, I'm gonna use a little bit of water, maybe some um, gesso mix, but it's gonna be a black and white pan. And uh, then there's another piece that's going to be uh, Amy Winehouse. White and Winehouse. Uh, that's the two, the commission, the one who's commissioned the piece. Those are our two favorite artists. The, Funny, you're not the, as good as you're not as good at the talking as you are <laughs> doing the hosting. <laughs> I know, right? No, but um, yeah, that's so the the piece that she wants is Etta James as well as the Amy Winehouse together. So this is one piece, and then the other. Okay. Be so okay, so would it be would that be considered a diptych? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm I'm digging deep for this. <laughs> no, it would, it would, it, I, I guess you can classify it as that. Yeah, you could. <laughs> Never, never been asked that question. I, 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 I'm digging I, deep. I'm telling that was like I, that was my like freshman year art appreciation <laughs> class there. <laughs> I'm surprised you even knew that terminology. That's what's up though. I like that. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. All right. So that's really fascinating. I love that. I have a love of music. So that's uh, those are and I, uh, Etta, um, Etta James is actually uh, one of my favorite jazz musicians. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. She's awesome. She's awesome. Always oh, talented. So, uh, but yeah, that's what I'm working on. So it'll be, I might not be able to finish, but. Fair enough, but it'll be interesting to see it uh, come to life uh, while we're chatting. Sure. So, so, all right. So back to, back to why I'm here. Um, yeah. So I do have a small business. Like I said, it's a, um, I mean, probably would be almost considered a micro business. It's pretty, it, it's really just sort of on the weekends and however yeah. much pace yeah. I can uh, keep up with. Um, so because I do this in my, free time on the weekends or in the evenings, then it really is just whatever it is I'm able to fit around my regular job and anything else I want to do in life. Um, so it started about seven years ago, more than five, less than 10. So about somewhere like six, seven years ago, um, I was doing something for the holidays and I decided I wanted to make apple butter, which is a really simple but delicious kind of holiday flavored mm -hmm. um, 
bread. And I decided if I was going to give that to people as a gift, it didn't make much sense to give them something that they had to use now, you know, like right away. That seemed like a lot of pressure. So I decided I was going to um, learn how to can it, which I knew is something that could, it could easily be done. You, you can look it up, Google it, and you figure out how to do it pretty simply. Um, so then it would be available for the people I was giving it to to use when, when they wanted, um, or they could give it away if they wanted to. It would be safe and, and stable to do that. Yeah. So um, my I don't know if my mom was able to find the link and follow and watch along with the video. I hope she did because she's what? a doll. Is, is so. Miss, uh, her name is Miss... It's Tony. So it's the, the, no. Tony Jones. She She's on here. She's on here. So I hope. Oh, great. Good. So I'm, I'm glad to hear it because uh, the, the, honestly, this whole thing kind of as many as many things uh, in, in my life, you like it, it, you get a like a, a breath of inspiration and you're, you know, yeah. like your your parents will lift you up on their shoulders and carry you across the finish line if you give wow. them a chance. So I met like I made an offhand hand comment about how I thought I was wanted to t try my hand at um, home canning. And um, in less than a week, in like three days, thank you, you know, to overnight shipping, um, I had a, like a starter kit and the authoritative book on how to do home canning, like the safe home canning uh, manual on my doorstep ready for me to look at and ready to use. So I... Um, so I learned how to do the home canning and I made the apple butter and it was really, you know, it was, it was delicious. It was a hit and it was easy. It wasn't too stressful. You read the directions and, you know, get your stuff all ready and follow directions and you don't freak out. And it's pretty easy to follow along with. Yeah. Um, not too long after that at work, I'm sitting at my desk uh, at work and a coworker um, had passed my office and gone to another coworker's office. And I could, th through the walls, I could kind of hear just a little bit you know, like I could hear like mumbly, mumbly, Muffle. pepper, mumbly, mumbly, spicy. Yeah. And then the, the, you know, the other person says, no, no, uh, mumbly, spicy, mumble, Michelle. So like, basically <laughs> what, what was happening was one coworker had, um, had gotten, a, had accidentally gotten a hold of a bunch of habanero peppers, which are a fairly, if you, if you like peppers, then you would know that this is um, on the scale of uh, mild to hot, it's considered a very high heat pepper. It's one of the hottest, not the hottest, but one of the hottest uh, out there. And she did not She did not have a palate for that. She thought they, these were mild peppers and almost killed her entire family putting some in chili. Um, so <laughs> she was trying to pass them off on a coworker and that coworker knew I liked spicy things. I love spicy food. And gave, so she said, I'm going to give you these peppers and gave me like a gallon zip top full of habanero and that's just too many habanero for a reasonable person to be saddled with so she gave these to me and i was like what am i going to do with all of these and i remembered i really like pepper jelly and i remembered seeing in that um resource book my mom had gotten me um a recipe for pepper jelly so that was the second thing i made and it was you know again kind of a slow process and you, you just like anything in life, you know, the more you do it, the easier it gets. But the first couple of times, it's, a, it's kind of slow going and you got to hit a rhythm and you, you hope for success, but, you know, maybe you don't quite get success. But um, I was very lucky and the recipe turned out great and it, it, it sat really well and I still had plenty in the freezer to, uh, to come out and try again. So um, then it was just sort of, um, you know, kind of flexing that muscle a little bit as a fruit would go on sale. Um, I'd give it a try and, just, you know, see what works and, there, you know, try some flavors I like, see, you see what works. And at some point you end up building up like I can eat a jar of jammer jelly. I can, mm -hmm. but like I don't need twelve jars of jammer yeah, jelly. Yeah. So I ended up with more than I could really process, or more than I needed. So um, a, a different coworker was kind enough and sat down and talked to me about cottage food law, which is a way that uh, people who make food items, certain kinds of food items, can sell it um, pretty simply, really. And um, by following some really simple rules and regulations, and it's not hard to. Uh, it's not hard to find the rules and figure out hey, kind of what the process is and figure out how the labeling needs to be. And so I, so I did that. So I started really, really small. Um, I still have, I uh, think, you know, I, I adore Facebook memories because it'll show me my, these, my, my earliest it's events. Gross, yeah. And oh, I like some of these things, I'm sure that, you know, like, like any of us, like you see the things from five, six, seven, you know, years ago and you're like, Oh, why did I think that was a good idea? <laughs> 
or, or just, you know, like, oh, I've come so far since then. And, you know, really that's more how I tend to look at it. It's like, wow, like that was really great, but I've come so far since then. So the first thing I, the first event I did, I didn't, I didn't have anything. I had the product, but I didn't even have a table. I didn't have, like, I had to borrow a table. I didn't have a tent. I didn't have a way to take a credit card payment. Um, but the community out at the event were, everybody was wonderful. So one person let me kind of stand in the shade of their tent, the, the place where the show was at, like they let me use a table and everyone was like, if you need a, you know, I can, we can do a credit card and we can swap it out and you've got to get like, here's some ways you can process credit cards. It won't cost anything. It's really easy. So the whole like farm market community or vending community is just incredibly helpful. Um, I've never seen them let, uh, you, I've never ever seen one vendor let another one fall on their face. Like they're always, you know, really there to be a, a, an assistant, uh, a, to offer assistance to each other. And I think I had six flavors available that day uh, to try. And um, right now I actually kind of took a look at my stock and, and, and pull, kind of pulled a, pulled some numbers and I like routinely have two dozen flavors at any given time. So right now I have 24 different flavors of jams and jellies available if I wanted to. Um, uh, and if I were to go, like when I go and do a show or an event, that would be, I'd be bringing a sampling of all of that avail, you know, available to a show. Uh, and yeah, so, you know, that's, it, things have changed a lot since uh, my first couple of events where I brought you know, like my table just looked, it was a whole lot of a few things. And now it's, you know, a few things of a whole lot. <laughs> so, uh, so I really enjoy that. And, you know, having, being uh, connected to this community in Osceola County um, and Central Florida, but Osceola County, I try really hard. I love to use locally sourced ingredients whenever I can. So I love to use, um, uh, fruit that I've been able to pick or that it has been, it has been sourced from local, um, from local farmers or local wild fields. You know, if I'm lucky enough to find one, um, friends, fruit trees. So, you know, I've been, I've been graced and gifted with knowing so many people and graced and gifted with so many opportunities. And, um, and it's just so much fun. It's great to, to try new things and have that opportunity and give it a go and, and, kind of play with different flavors and make those connections too. You know, if somebody, somebody gives me a bunch of guava that they don't, you know, like, what am I going to do with all this guava? I know what to do with all that guava. Give it to me. I'm going to make some jam up out of that. So I'll, you know, and then trade it out and maybe let them try something that they'd never had before, or just make those connections and friendships. And it's been really, um, it's been a great opportunity for me. And I personally really, yeah. Yeah, yes, I, don't sir. Want, I don't want to lose the question so well as you're talking because you're throwing a lot I'm of <laughs> So um, with the quick question, I mean, you can continue going on with what were you saying, but a side question. When mm -hmm. when you when you buy the ingredients and foods and fruits and stuff like that from the farmers and local areas, what it, do, do you believe that that is um, it's less expensive than going to the actual grocery stores that they sell their things to or is it that and or um is the quality better as well going directly to them than getting it processed through you know going you know it just it, it does depend on what it is there's some things that like there's some things that you're not going to get better than at a grocery store as far as quality but that's few and far between wow. and wow. Um, so for me, like, I love, I love working with local, you know, locally sourced fruits. You know, I love that when I make blueberry jam, I'm able to say, um, you know, this is, the, this, these blueberries came from this farm. These blueberries came from that row yeah. and I picked yeah. them. <laughs> I like that, you know, and, uh, the, and I like that, um, and, uh, that I can, you know, work with the, you know, it doesn't, it helps our local, it helps our local businesses. It helps our local economy. Yes, it helps yes. me. Um, it, you know, like I like, I love the bragging rights that it gives me uh, to, to say that this is home sourced or locally sourced. Sure. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I absolutely love that. And, uh, you know, of course I can, there, there's a lot of things that it would be easier maybe to get it from the grocery store. Mm -hmm. um, and there's some things that you just don't grow here. Like apples don't right. grow in Florida. So, uh, you know, I'm getting my apples from the store. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Although I will say I have for real gone on vacation mm -hmm. and gone apple picking on vacation and then yeah. filled my luggage with apples. Yeah. So <laughs> and nothing wrong with that, but nothing wrong with that. Now, I, what I do want to ask also is like, 
because you brought up a good point on how it helps the economy. So yes. with the fact that, you know, how, how important, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of sidetracked to what you were going into. Yeah. But one last <laughs> question, so when you, when you, um, you know, how important is it for, you know, local restaurants to kind of support and keep that dollar within the community? Absolutely. Lot, what a lot of people do, well, what I see a lot of business owners do, they'll go out to Orlando or Polk County and Orange County because they got farms and stuff out there or stores mm -hmm. out there. But mm -hmm. what they're not, we're not, what they're not thinking of is that they're not keeping that dollar within the within the community, which is, Absolutely. you know, it makes sense to to you know spend your money with the local farmers and the local grocery stores and whatnot in the Kissimmee because they can also vouch for you and say, hey, yeah, you know, we, exactly. you know, this such and such sells our fruits or whatever it could be. So how important is that for for? Um, it's really I like I like that. I think it's you know I think it's important for businesses in general to kind of support. Um, as close as possible, like as close to your own zip code as you can, you know, like circulate out, but try, you know, if you can get it from your own, um, your own backyard, why wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, so, and I do, you know, I do have some of those partnerships, whether it's the, the local farm markets that I participate in um, and work out of, or um, there are some collaborations I have with local businesses. So there's a gel, there is one jam that I make and a restaurant buys it and I sell it almost exclusively to that restaurant. Right. And they use it for a few of their recipes. They use it for, um, they have a, um, it's, uh, so if, if, if I'm allowed to brag on them, uh, yeah. that, <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a restaurant in St. Cloud called Fire and uh, the P-H-Y-R-E and they have a brewery um, and a restaurant that is really phenomenal. In fact, they just celebrated one year um, in business. And uh, so they, I make a Carolina Reaper jelly. That is the hottest pepper in the world, by the way. So I, that's the hottest pepper in the world. And I make a pepper jelly out of that with a, a pineapple pep, uh, Carolina Reaper pe jelly, uh, pepper yeah. jelly. And so I sell that to them and they use it in their Reaper, um, fire Reaper wings. And it is, they're delicious. Oh my gosh. And so, you know, I'm, they, you know, they will, t you know, if people are like, I love this, I love these wings, they'll be like, you can get that jam. Like I can show you, I can connect you to that person. <laughs> so, uh, and they're really a wonderful, you know, so they support me and I support them. And, um, and I like that kind of relationship. Um, you know, I, when Mick Farms had strawberries uh, in season, I went out and picked strawberries. When um, Chapman Berry Farms and Double C Bar Ranch, uh, Double, Double Bar C, um, have blueberries in, in season. I, you know, I, I love to be able to get blueberries from them. Um, so, you know, and same thing, you know, when I, when I'm, oh, and um, premium peach is another local farm, premium peach. And these seasons are short, you know, so a lot of times these fruit seasons. So, you know, the, you, we're talking about a business that has bills 12 months out of the year and is making a profit, you know, for one or two months out of the year sometimes, you know, depending on the business, you know, uh, peach season is about, it's less than a month long usually. It's, you know, four weeks sometimes. So, you know, like, yikes. So I love to be able to promote them and make sure that they are, um, you know, give, give them their due as it were when, um, when I'm able to. Yeah, for sure. So uh, that's uh, really, that is really important to me. And you to all of this, like, you know, I'm talking about fun stuff right now. I'm talking about making jams, like, you know, and it's fun and I make connections and I love that. And I like, and I really do enjoy that. And I really like making, um, I like farm markets because I like the, I really like the, the short interactions with people kind of fleeting, you know, like, I, and I, not to say that they're not meaningful. I like that though. I like the, you know, a, a kind of a boisterous, brief, brisk, you know, great interaction and kind of keep it moving. Like, I love that. It's almost like, it's like those, um, like, oh God, like those weather radios that you have to crank to get them to, you know, yeah. <laughs> do you want them I, up? I, 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 don't I, I don't remember that back in my day. <laughs> Back They're like storm radios. <laughs> it's like a storm, ra and like you, it, like a hand crank, but it kind of builds it up like the battery. It builds, okay. you know, like so, I like that. Like those, it, those brief interactions kind of build me up and energize me, and I enjoy that. But, but in all sincerity, if we're talking about the interconnectivity of businesses and the interconnectivity of our community, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something that is a real issue for me and has always been um, like a personal issue is addressing food insecurities where I live. So. Um, so, you know, like this, now that I'm just going to take like a weird, like dark tone, like, gee, Shelly, what happened? <laughs> this is all about, it's all about, you know, that's what the whole show is about, inter educating inf information. So 
whichever turn it takes is cool because that the, there you that go so the wheel has turned it's all good it's all good <laughs> so so um growing up and again kind of you know talking about my family uh, you know my mom um my mom really raised me my not, not to say my dad didn't have a hand in this but my mom was um, was the more vocal of the two parents yeah. so my mom raised me to really genuinely believe that it's it's not enough to live in your community it's not enough to work in your community like that's expected that's the bare that's the base minimum um but my mom really raised me to be civic minded and to be involved and involvement can look a lot of different ways involvement can be volunteerism involvement can be um, spending your time. It could be spending your money. It could be spend used to using your voice. Um, right. Volunteer, you know, like being civic minded can look a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. It can, um, my mom, I lived in a, you know, suburban neighborhood growing up, middle, middle class, nothing, nothing special, nothing weird. Like just really as middle of the road as it could be. Um, unfortunately, the at the end of that road um, was a stop sign where they really needed to be <laughs> a street light. And um, because there was only a stop light, a stop sign at the end of that road, the people got hit by cars. Our next door neighbor ended up with um, closed head trauma. And my, you know, everyone was like, you know, somebody needs to do something. We need to get a stop light. Like this stop sign isn't enough. Somebody needs to do something. And like enough people were like, somebody needs to do something. And my mom like looked around and was like, oh crap, I'm somebody. And so my mom like had to go and figure out how, what the ordinances were, what the processes were, you know, I can't even tell you, you know, she just, it was boring, you know, it was like, so, so she was knocking on doors and answering, you know, like making phone calls and reading, reading information and trying to figure out how to get a stop light because the, yeah. you know, the kids are getting bigger and they're going to give you the ones that getting hit by cars. Right. Um, and so she figured out what to do. And so she became a real community advocate. Yeah. Um, and was very civic minded and raised me. I you know, I was raised in her shadow. So um, I tend to follow along and be a lot like her as much as I can. So right. my day job involves a lot of community involvement, but my, my side time um, also is deeply connected with that. So food insecurities is something that she was always really sensitive about. And so am I. So the idea that people may not have the ability to for for a variety of reasons access the necessary nutrients that they need in a day yeah. so and there are a lot again just like there's a lot of ways you could be civic minded there are a lot of things that could be a barrier to being able to get the things you need um, a barrier could be transportation maybe i don't have a car to go to get food a barrier could be um, ability to store or cook food you know if i am living in a hotel and i have a coffee pot and a microwave and a mini fridge the fact that uh, that a local grocery store has um, a family pack of chicken thighs on sale for you know a very good price doesn't help me because I have no way to keep that I would, you know, um, just sorry to cut you off oh boy <laughs> but you brought no you brought that up because when when I was in, <laughs> I was living in San Francisco California right and I was I was homeless out there for eight months and when I was out there sleeping in my car mm -hmm. um before, you know in your car you have no stove you have no microwave you have no nothing like that right and the hotel, the well, I couldn't afford the hotel. The hotel out there was about two hundred dollars a, a month. So one average one bedroom thirty five hundred. You know, it, it's crazy expensive over there. But the motels over there, they didn't even have uh, refrigerators, refrigerators or uh, microwaves. So mm -hmm. automatically, it's like even though I got food stamps, I still got food stamps. But I couldn't get, even if I bought cold food, I couldn't cook. I couldn't cook anything. So it's right. like, I think. That that's a barrier that a lot of people don't understand. Like people the, don't think the, about it. They don't they don't think about the fact that the, the little small things that you have in your household, those exactly. people are always are. Oh, even if they live in a hotel, most hotels, by per city ordinance, not even allowed to put a stove inside the room. No, no, so, you can't. You know, yeah, you. Mm -hmm. certain, certain certain ones certain ones do, but that's certain you know counties and cities. So it's right. just people don't think about yeah. that. Though, so. Right, and so you know, like so, a lot of times it's really easy if you have never experienced food insecurity, it's easy to right. not understand why a person would have a barrier. So yeah. sometimes it's that they don't live where a store is. Um, you know, not every place has a, like, you know, the, the idea that a huge portion of this country does their grocery shopping at a dollar store, like a, a large proportion, like the dollar store or a quickie mart. 
Yeah, yeah. you know, the things I can cook in a coffee pot isn't yeah. like that's not on the food pyramid, really. Like yeah, that's. <laughs> So, um, you know, or if I'm, you know, if I'm living in a hotel and, you know, in Osceola County has the highest proportion of people living permanently yeah. in hotels yeah. in the entire country. Yeah. No place else in the country has more people living in a hotel as if that were a permanent living arrangement than Osceola County. Osceola County right now, we do to current circumstances, has the highest unemployment rate in, Osce uh, in the state of Florida, 31%. Correct. So 30% of our people, of our residents are unemployed. Um, a huge portion of our residents are underemployed. Um, uh, food insecurity is a reality for a lot of the people that we call neighbors. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not hard to make some of these connections with, even like with my hobby, um, it, with other agencies and with other groups, there's still ways, really simple ways to help. Um, I've done collaborations with the Council on Aging, which despite its name, the name makes it sound like they, they help the elderly and they absolutely do, but that's not all that they do. They help through the generations. So they have a food bank for community members of our community. And if people have a food need, then they will do what they can to connect them to their food needs. Um, they have uh, Meals on Wheels. Cong and so Meals on Wheels is a, pro a great program for people who are homebound. Um, a person might be homebound because they're elderly. Uh, they may be homebound because they're disabled. But a lot, for a lot of them, uh, the Meals on Wheels meals are the only hot meal that they may receive. You know, it, and they and they didn't have to cook it. You know, so it was some. It's ready for them to go, and it may be sometimes some of the only contact they have with people from outside their house because there's there's a reason they're not getting up and getting out and cooking and doing these things on their own. They're largely homebound. So. Um, and it gives the the people, the, the volunteers uh, that do these programs have an opportunity to see the home, kind of see if things are looking okay, you know, and, and I know that they do what they can to report back to the staff at the council and let them know their status. Like, you know, they think that they're struggling here, it looks pretty good. I saw that the last meal wasn't eaten, you know, like they report back and that's, that's a, you know, a huge connection like if you just yeah. call them or ask them i'm fine you know it might be the yeah. answer you'd get a lot of the time um so you know that having the lay being able to lay eyes on them is really important and the council on aging um collaborated with another um kind of program collaborated with the council rather called feed osceola and feed osceola uh partnered with uh mick farms and um ooh, a real estate a home builder um something homes something homes kent, kent homes kent Kent Holmes, thank you. I was, I, oh, I appreciate it. Yes, so, I knew it was a K. It's like it's not Kendall, it's not Kylie. I don't think it's any of the Kardashians. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kent Holmes, and so they collaborated and were able to um, raise a lot of monies, and the monies were being split in a couple different ways. Some of it was going to go to local farmers like Mick Farms to buy produce to go to people in the community who have uh, food needs, and some of the monies was going to go to locally owned restaurants in the form of gift cards from those restaurants to give to uh, the people who have food needs. Um, so I think that's brilliant. Like it's a great way for um, charity to help community and help agent um, help businesses and help, you know, help just sort of become cyclical and can help each other. Um, and there's no reason that we can't, there's no reason that our efforts can't be kind of multi-pronged and can't, uh, you know, like you can kill a lot of birds with a stone if you're clever enough. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, I like that. Um, I like that this community is small enough that we can, um, with with kind of these efforts, we have a maximum reach. Um, so I think that's something that I really, and even like with Shelly's Jellies, I've done food drives um, within my, like, you know, bring, bring me some canned goods and I'll donate, you know, like you'll get, if you bring me canned goods then I'll give you a sale on your purchase. And then those month, those foods will go directly to the food bank. Um, so, you know, I definitely try to support that and I try and support by getting the word out there and, you know, get in, and doing anything I can to, to bring awareness to it. Um, you know, I think that there's a lot of just lack of knowledge. Why? people might uh, might go hungry and there is no need. People need to go hungry. Um, there are resources out there. Um, there are agencies. Um, there's a lot of agencies. I, I mentioned the Council on Aging. They're, the, they're not the only ones. St. Cloud has food banks. Uh, Point Santa has food banks. There's lots of different, right now, especially because of COVID, there's been a lot of um, 
food drops or places where people can pick food up. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate to be seeing that because I know that with a 31% unemployment rate, people are hurting, um, you know, if, if you're having to choose between um, food and um, maybe the electric bill, you know, you're probably going to try and go for food. So <laughs> And, but, you know, right now things are a little hard for people and, um, and I, but, but things are always hard. Like, you know, like right now we're facing different challenges, but there, but there's always, there's always people in our communities that are, are going to have some kind of a struggle. And there's no reason that I, I don't feel comfortable trying to pretend to turn a blind eye to that or giving lip service to, um, like someone should help them. Like, you know, would you kind of like the lessons my mom taught me when I was so young, you know, it turns out I'm someone. So, you know, like I don't get to, I don't, I don't get the, to have the luxury of not acting on a problem that I can see is there. Right, right, right. No, that's, 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 I'm glad that we have that mentality. And I'm glad that, you know, I, I would wish that, you know, uh, I think though, when it comes to small business owners, they're mm -hmm. more enticed to, or that I think that they, they feel more value in really connecting with each, cu each customer, right? So I feel like I w that's why, like, when you do the, you know, if you bring in a canned good and it goes back, you, you give it back to the community, whatever case may be. But y'all, y'all are doing it in the most, you know, you don't, you're not making the most money that you could, like, the big franchise companies. So I, personally, I would wish that the big franchise companies had the heart as the same type of heart and giving attitude as a small business because, you know, they have so much money. Like they're doing, you're doing so much <laughs> that money. Like, man, you. you really change the world you can really make a great impact to where you know everyone is either being fed or you're helping out whatever kids would be but yeah small business owners and franchise 500 uh company owners are completely not the same so <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that to, i want to commend you for you know for doing things like that because i think that is it's needed and i also think that's what's unique uh with you know the small town downtown kissimmee downtown st cloud you know those businesses are usually, from what I know of, they're connected. They all know each other. They all support each other, um, regardless mm -hmm. of the even if it's in the same um, industry. They're still, you know, you know, support each other. So, I yep, and I love that. I love that about um, Kissimmee and St. Cloud. Like the, I love the the collaborations that I'll see. You know, with what would be competition and you know like you it's market it's market competition but you know but still you know i love to see the collaborations and to see the um how they will help each other out and uh, you know especially in times of need it's really great it you know it it's i, I definitely have appreciated that and benefited from that yeah. and, um, so so now let me get into what is the and i always ask all the business owners this when you first started what were the the toughest give me top three trials and tribulations that you had that you had to like overcome that was a, a very big hassle and, and kind of what kind of shed some advice for people who want to start their own business as well and how what the struggles you start Ooh, let's see okay so let's see struggles um i'm a pretty good like i like to make lists um i like to be prepared so, and I like to have lists, like that's kind of my go-to. Yeah. So I tried really hard to, um, when I started, I tried really hard to figure out what um, like actual physical things I would need. Like, you know, I, I need a table. I need a, I need a way to get things from point A to point B, you know, thing, so that was, um, that wasn't too bad. I actually, like, I've seen some people like really like, just show up and not be, yeah, yeah. not be ready for the show, <laughs> not be ready for the day. <laughs> and you know, like I'm you never mad at it. It's like, but wow, like it didn't occur to you that that might be a thing you need. Okay. All right. Like, you know, make, maybe, maybe you can start a list, <laughs> so, but, uh, um, but uh, so that wasn't too hard for me, but trying to figure out um, one of the things that was a challenge was trying to figure out like, if I have this thing as a product, um, what, how do you price it? And so that was a challenge for me for sure. And I definitely reached out to some other people who do similar things, but in different areas and asked them kind of how they went about the, um, because there's a, there's a couple things with like with, with specifically with that, what I do there, you know, in the product, there is the making of the product. And then there's sort of the presentation of the product. So like, 
you know, with a, with a jar of jam, you know, you've got the, you've got the jar, you've got the jam inside. And then for me, you know, like you have a label and you need the, the label because for cottage food has to have some magic words on it. So I have to make sure that it's got its magic words in the approved font size, etc. And for me, I also like to uh, decorate them with a little bit of um, fabric. So, you know, I, I refer to it, I call it um, dressing them up for their big day, like they're dressed up for their party. So for me, um, you know, like it, I would ask around and um, the other people who are far more well versed in this than, than me would be like, you know, you have to like consider how much does it cost for this jar? How much does it cost for the fruit, for the sugar, for the spices? How much does it cost for the fabric? How much is your time? to um, cut the fabric out, you know, so to make the things, you know, so all of that took a long time for me to really crunch those numbers and figure out what was an appropriate cost to make versus price to sell. Um, and that is an area where I think a lot of home crafters can really struggle, like people who are small, really small business owners or like, I mean, like I said, mine's basically micro business. Uh, yeah. And a lot of times like with home crafted items, um, you uh, something that just breaks my heart is you could you could be at a farm market or a craft fair and somebody will see something that somebody's made and they will say well oh well I could buy it for less or I could make it for less and you know of course like that's such a gut like that's such a punch to the gut because yeah you could but you didn't so <laughs> like you know I did that thing like I'm the one who took the time to make the thing and this is the price that I feel like is fair and when you think when somebody says that they don't think that the price is fair like especially on things like um handcrafted like blankets or garments and things like that. Yeah. You know, um, that's really, you know, that's, it's, it can be a, like, it can be really dejecting to hear yeah. that other people don't value your things the way you value your things. Yeah. I mean that in the fiscal sense of value. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, can be a, l a little bit painful. Thankfully, I haven't had to deal with that a whole lot, um, but not none. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and to, sorry to cut you off. No, it's okay. I don't ever want to forget my question. So um, with, with how important do you think it is price-wise? Because I remember when I was doing my, my business with my T-shirts and stuff like that, I had a T-shirt business. I mean, I still do it, but you know, since I'm running for mayor, I just kind of put that to the side. I don't want no conflict of interest. But it's when uh, I have my T-shirts, I'm like, man, I feel like this, this costs like $25 worth of time effort energy buying the shirt going the gas to go pick up the shirts everything you know i outlined it out but i used to sell it for like 15 10 dollars less or whatever because um i i was told by when i was i was probably like 20 i was young at the time so i was listening to an older person like you know get a mentor and he was like yeah you know it may be worth that to you but your audience uh may not have you got to know your audience like you got to research your audience your, your audience may not have that type of money right so um, that's why I had sold it for what it was because I knew that my audience wasn't like rich, rich or whatever case mm -hmm. it be. So I was like, well, I'll just sell it for cheaper, whatever case it be. Um, but so I, I say that to, to to bring back to you. You know, did you did you ever price gouge like based off your audience on certain markets? Like, did you go to a, a certain show and then price it a different thing or a, a different uh, price for your gems? And then in your store, it's a different price, and online, it's a different. Like, did you? Did you do yeah, that? it's a really good question. I actually recent, just recently within within the last six months did a price adjustment. Okay. So like I had to change the prices on everything because I realized it's like this is not worth it. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, I love what I do and it's not that that's not worth it. I love what I do. But the um, the I was seriously under price like what I was selling. It was under definitely price, like, under it was under. Yeah, it was definitely underpriced for what it is. Wow. But there have been times where I've done shows there have been times where I've done shows and I have known that the audience, and that's really important. Like if you're going to go to an event, you, it's really like, ju like just because um, there's an event available and the vendor space or the booth space um, is a price, is that a price point I'm comfortable with, but that's not necessarily enough. Like me as a vendor, it's my responsibility to ask the coordinator, the, the event coordinator, who is your audience? Mm 
so that I know if this is for me or not, you know, so I know, like I've been to events and it's like, these are not my people. Like these are not, you know, um, you know, there's some, there are some people and they don't want what I'm putting in a jar, whether it's what I'm putting in it or what I, how I, the price that I, the price at which I'm selling it, um, you know, <laughs> the price at which it could be theirs, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, you know, it's important to know that like, you know, who that audience is, the, the, the one thing like, so kind of knowing who your audience is, is very important. And that's one of those kind of pitfalls or things to really pay attention to. Like, that's something that I would tell a new person getting into it. Like, is this your audience? Um, you know, like I have a friend who does, um, did she does, she does uh, printed art. So smaller printed art. Yeah. So when she, um, so when she was at an event, um, when she was setting up for an event, I, like I pointed out as like, remember, this is outdoors. So you need to find a way to anchor your items. If yeah. there's any wind, like if there's even a slight breeze, like, you know, you watch a, watch a couple of vendors chasing their stuff around a farm market a couple of times and you, and you learn like, like, ah, oh, you need to wait those, you need to wait those things down. Um, or, you know, for, so for her, ideally, like, you know, potentially maybe indoor events are what I would be looking for instead of outdoor events. So for me, the one, the, the thing I have learned, and it's just like the most, it almost seems like super random. So like, I really, like, I love a night market. I love a night market. I love the vibe when, you know, things are going on at night and there's usually like some music and you kind of like, you know, you got, you get in your, 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 you know, you got your vibe going and you're grooving yeah. and like, it's like, it's really great. But as soon as the sun goes down, I won't sell anything more. Like I may as well back up. <laughs> there's something about as soon as the sun goes down, it does not matter how many lights I have at my booth. It does not matter how well lit the kind of general area is when the sun goes down, apparently jam does not look delicious in jars anymore because nobody's buying it. <laughs> so, uh, so I know that. Like I've been trying to make some glow in the dark jam. Right, like I need to come up with something. I, I got, I'll work on it. Um, but I, so I have been asked, like you know, oh, you know, we really would love to have you at this event. You know, oh, is you know, sounds like fun. Is there indoor space as well as outdoor? Outdoor only. Ooh, you know, like I'm gonna really have to think about that. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's that's key though. It's all, it's all about dating because I think with a lot of younger, um, and I I seen it in myself because I started when I was like 22, 23. Uh, and I look back now, I'm 30 now, and I look back like, yeah, you know, uh, we, we're so, when you're young, or not even just young, just starting up, just fresh, beginning, we're so eager to, like, get everything, every opportunity. Oh, yeah, I got to, now nah, I got to be seen, I got to be, and, mm -hmm. and you kind of forget to analyze the situation, like, well, is this, is this event really suited for your business? So, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, that takes a growth, if you don't have a business mentor, then that, that takes just trial and error. Having a mentor is really, so for me, one of the things I did was I found somebody who did what I wanted to do, but somewhere else. So I was not competition for her. Wow. So, um, so I found her on Facebook and I hit her up and I was like, will you pretty please hold my hand and be my best friend? Yeah. So, <laughs> and, um, and she has, she was wonderful and she still, um, is a, a resource for me. And we, we've, you know, we became friends. And uh, so like something I enjoy doing is each year I like to enter into the county fair. And even though she does something similar, she's branched out and does now, she does baked goods instead of just jams and jellies. But she had never entered the county fair. And so like last year, I basically bullied her into like, so you're joining, you're going to enter your county fair, right? So she did and she won um, best of show for her, uh, pies and like so she you know like it was something she was terrified to do but I like bullied her so but you know finding, finding a mentor and and not just somebody who does something you do it doesn't necessarily have to be the exact same thing but maybe a real similar mindset so you know kind of maybe the same kind of market or the same kind of business or the same kind of demeanor um or in um environment so those you know somebody who works similarly to what you want to be working with mm -hmm. so um i think that that can be really helpful and um there's really like you 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 can't put a you, you can't put a price tag or a value on what they're able to teach you right right, right. yeah for sure and and how I, and and that's another thing i think how important is it for you or as an advice for people who are beginning, how important would it be for someone to kind of let their guard down and not, because a lot of people, they're like, oh, I don't want to, 
you know, I want to make it by myself. I want to make it on my own. Yeah, I like, got this. Yeah, you know, that, that, <laughs> that mindset as well as the mindset of, like, being, uh, oh, we're not saying being scared, but thinking that, you know, if they reach out to somebody who's already good in the same industry as in, as a competition, mm-hmm. how, do we, how do we, you know, why is it important to break that mentality and not uh, say, like, everyone in the competition, like, how, how important is that to kind of tell the, the, the young people or the young entrepreneurs? <laughs> I like to, I, you know, I, anybody who expresses an interest, like if people, when, when they come up to my booth and are, like express an interest, like, oh, I like this fruit grows on my property. I didn't know I could do this. I'm like, heck yeah, you can do yeah, this, yeah. you know, message me and I will walk you through this and, you know, and I'll let them, you know, so I want to make sure if anyone is specifically in like in, in what I do, if anyone ever even expresses a hint of an interest, I want to make sure that they're doing it safely. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of unsafe canning options out there, which could lead to bad outcomes. Um, so I want to make sure that they're not doing those things. And so I really try to um, encourage them. Like, here's the, a really good resource. You can ask me anything, message me, and I will walk you through it. So I really try to hold their hand as much as I can if that's a a shared interest of them and if it's just sort of doing these kinds of things in general if somebody you know if somebody's really shy Mm -hmm. I just keep throwing it out there like hey you know you expressed an interest this might be a good show for you you know and then um you know let let me know if you need some advice you know or like how can you know how can I be of assistance to you what what do you what do you think you might need to make this work for you um if somebody is doesn't want advice, you know, and they're like, I got this, you know, like, all right, you, you know, like you, you, you do you boo boo. But like, I, but I also may, I also may like have like for real, like I, like I, uh, it would not, it would not be unreasonable for me to, to bring like extra supplies to maybe uh, kind of cover their back and if they, if they weren't as prepared as they thought they might be um, just to, you know, just, just to keep the, so, so they could, so they could get through the day and let them save face. Yeah, 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 for sure. And I think that so. I'm glad that you I'm glad that you do that because I know when I like back when I was at Clark Atlanta University in Georgia, that's when I started my business on campus. And I was I had the biggest, you know, clothing line on campus. I was making I was contracted with the you know, the school and I was making the school basketball t shirts, the football team. I was I was I was the top person as a student, right? So um, a lot of other you know, younger students or just businesses that's already local in Atlanta was like thinking I was in competition with them. I'm like, I'm not in, I'm not in those type of competition. I'll give you, I gave them everything that I know. Anyone that asks, oh yeah, this is where I get my shirts from. I go to the Louis Georgia, this is my warehouse. This is where I get my inks from. This is what I, this is the process that I use. And I, I, I literally gave them everything because me personally, I know that I can't make a shirt for everyone in Atlanta. You know, like it's too much people. Yeah, yeah. It's too much exactly. customers in the world. Like I can't, like even if you think about Kissimmee, like there's 74 or 75,000 people now in Osceola County. I mean, in the city of Kissimmee. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, there's not one business that can serve that amount of people. So why not right. share the, share the um, information along with, you know, let mm-hmm. them know. Like, because sometimes if I wasn't able to make a shirt, I would know someone who was able to make a shirt or in, within the time frame. I said, oh, yeah, it goes to my friend. He does the same exact thing that I do. Give you a good price. Um, I just I just don't have the time to do it, you know. And I think just building the and vice versa, like they'll send me their customers. It's like mm-hmm. it's like cold marketing. So I I never I never yep. understood why people would uh, uh, take it as competition when in reality it really is it's bringing in more money for you if you do. Yeah, you know, there's, there's, partnership. there's yeah. plenty to go around. People, you know, so there's my my very first farm market that I did regularly. There was a guy who was already a vendor there. He he was the existing vendor, and he would do. His name was Preston, and he was a real sweet guy. And he made um, guava jams and jellies, and blackberry jams and jellies because he had a lot of guava and blackberry uh, plants and trees on his property so when i started going to the market i would bring jams and jellies but i would never ever bring guava and i wouldn't bring blackberry those were the flavors he did so i never so i basically had nobody told me i didn't have like nobody told me that was the thing i had to do it was like kind of self-imposed it was a self-imposed no compete and we would be at the market the same markets in a kind of a circle setup and people would come and they would look and they would say you know like do you have any guava and i would like with a song in my heart point over to preston be like preston has the guava (laughs) 
<laughs> he's got it. You want to go over there to get that. And then, you know, or Blackberry and he's got it and it's great. And, and you know, so please go over to him and give it a try. And so, you know, and, and I, you know, I still went home with money in my pocket and, you know, so like that wasn't like there, there was nothing but love with us between us. Yeah. All right. It's not a big loss. So, um, but now that's all I, I commend you for, for definitely sharing, sharing what you have for people who do ask and come up trying to figure out, you know, to get started with their small business or even. Yeah. Okay. So, so now, um, where you're at now in life and where you're at now, um, what a lot of people I know who do have businesses, how, what is your, I guess your routine to balance out the work life? Because you have your own business and you work yes. for another yeah. company and you know, you have your own life. So how, how do you mm-hmm. balance that out? How, what, what's the process of that? You know, that's, um, so um, I, my, I do work Monday through Friday, like I said. So I've got a day job, I work at the courthouse and I coordinate some really fun programs um, they're fun to me. So, uh, but I, I really, you know, I love what I do. So, um, I enjoy that. And, but my, my side hustle, my small business is so different. Like it's, you know, completely different kind of interaction. And it's so really, it's really fun for me. Um, my husband, I'm super happily married. Um, so, so happy. (laughs) I, I just, I love, I just adore that boy. So he's incredibly supportive of me with the, um, with the small business and he's a huge help. So, um, he helps me so much. So he does all um, the grocery shopping. And so like, if I do need supplies, like I still need supplies, I need things like jars and lids and, you know, different, you know, lemon juice and different things that from the store. So I make a list. And he knows exactly which things to get. Um, You know, if I tell him the things I need, he knows exactly what I need to, like what I need to get. He knows where to find it. If it's not at this store, he knows what store to go to next. He knows better than I do. Like he knows the availability of these things better than I do in the store. Like I I haven't, I'll go months and months at a time and not step foot in a grocery store because I'll be busy in the kitchen making, making the products. So he takes care of all of that. He's such a support. I just adore him so much. Um, So so he helps me with that. Then, um, so usually on the weekends, one day will be spent in the kitchen making product, and um, then another day will be spent at, at a market selling product. So that's pretty much my weekend. Um, as far as like balance, um, my husband and I are child free by choice, uh, so we don't have like I don't have the distraction of kids. Got it. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I don't have that distraction kind of taking time away from things I'd uh, want to be doing differently or, or instead yeah. of, uh, so that's kind of nice. Um, it, it, occasionally it'll get in the way of, you know, like sometimes a, like a friends will like pop up and, you know, like, oh, like, let's get together and do this thing. And, but I'd already committed to do a market and that's a bit of a bummer. Like, oh, like, you know, if I, you know, like I, if I'd known ahead of time, I could have planned around it. Yeah. But, um, but so, but barring that, um, you know, it's really, you know, because it's my small business, I'm exactly as busy as I choose to be. And that's one of the things I love about it. Like it's my hustle, you know, like it's my, you know, it's my small business. So it's my time and I get to spend it how I choose. So if I feel like I'm getting and burned out or I just don't want to, then I don't. And that's, <laughs> so I will make less profit because I have sold less things. That is my choice. Wow. And I really enjoy that. Like, I, I like that. It's not, I'm not doing it. Um, it is a small business that I don't have to have. So for me, it's really a hobby that got out of control and, um, and I can kind of treat it as such. It's sort of a luxury for me. Um, so, you know, if I, if I were dependent on the if I were dependent on the business for income, obviously that would be a different kind of beast. Um, but I am, you know, so for me, um, and like I said, the interactions at markets, those kind of small brief, um, interactions, um, are good for me. Like they kind of energize me and fuel me. So they're, they're good for my temperament and personality. So I benefit from those engagements, the kind of quick, uh, like five, 10 minute engagements and then keep it moving on to the next thing. Um, and I love that. I love the, um, I, I really do enjoy those, those, um, interactions when I have them. So, uh, that kind of re- refreshes me and char- recharges my batteries for the week ahead. Nice, nice. Well, that's awesome. And, and that's, that's, that's great that, uh, cause I know that's one of the barriers, well, not say barriers, but one of the, the actual balance issues would be the, yeah, I got to take the kids to school or we got to break up, let's take ah. the kids to, you know. Birthday uh, parties. Yeah, yeah, all of that. Like, <laughs> the of a 
lot of time <laughs> and money at that. And yes. then, you know, you would have to make that small business an actual financial uh, uh, income like needs, you know, so, um, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's small stuff. So it's a little bit easier for you to have that, that work life. <laughs> so that's, that's cool. Though. That's awesome. So what is the, uh, I guess now, like now, you, you know, you've been doing the business for years. Um, yeah. What, what now do you think is, like, what's the struggle for you now as in, okay, I've been in the business for a while now. I went over the, the beginning stages of struggles. What is the uh, kind of like, the not say dilemmas, but mm-hmm. what do you see as something that kind of is holding you back or you think could be better or should be better by now? Yeah, so... Uh, a limitation that I face is um, because I sell under cottage food law, the way I can sell is limited. So the, um, I do farm markets and events like that because the, with the way the wording is in cottage food, um, I have to speci- like I have to sell the product directly to the customer. I can't have my products in stores on shelves um, and have them sell it. So like I can't why, basically why like be- why is that? That's it's one of the rules of cottage food law. So cottage, okay. uh, um, because my products are made in what's a co- called a cottage food operation that's not subject to Florida's food safety regulations. So basically, it's uh, because I don't have because I'm cooking from a home cook kitchen instead of a commercial kitchen. Um, so as a result, uh, I can't have my things on the shelf in a store for them to sell it because that would then put them in like they'd be liable. If something was wrong with the product, whereas because I'm the one making it and he del- literally handing it to the customer, right. they have the ability to say like, you know, if something did go wrong, like I got this from Shelly's Jellies and here's, you know, here's the source and they can trace it back to me directly. Right. Um, so that's one of the limitations. There are some ways around it. I mean, obviously, if you, if I did get a, um, like a, a food handling license, oh, okay. yeah. worked out of a commercial kitchen, got a, um, a, um, catering license. You know, so there are some workarounds. So yeah, those are yeah. some things that I have thought about, you know, if I wanted to, like, do I want to, like, you know, and really it is kind of, it, it's, do I want to, is that important to me to pursue at this time? And right now it isn't, but I won't say that it never is. It's absolutely something I think about um, a couple times a year. I kind of sit and like, hmm, like, you know, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe. <laughs> maybe I'm going to get there. Uh, so there's some, uh, some definite benefits to those, um, those other levels of, um, they give you, they offer you some freedoms, but they have their own kind of price to pay as well. And a lot, a lot of that is quite literally the price you pay. Um, (laughs) so in that there's like licensures involved and those things uh, cost money. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's something to be said. So that's something that I, I, I kind of toy with, like if I want to someday possibly, um, change the, you know, change it up. And if I did want to have products available uh, on shelves in stores, you know, what steps I would take to make that happen. But, you know, then there's the part of me that's like, you know, I like, yeah, I can do those things, but I just don't see a person going to like a market, like a, 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 a brick and mortar and be like, well, you know, like I just really need all these Shelly's jellies. Like, you know, I just don't know. That I don't know that they, you know, there'd be product on shelves, and I like there to be a pretty brisk turnaround time between the time I put something in a jar and the time it ends up in someone's hands. Yeah. And um, I can control that better if I'm doing farm markets and small markets and doing those direct sales. I'm able to manage my stock a lot better because I'm I'm seeing every sale. It's not information that's getting back to me a week later, or a month later. Um, like that this did sell or that didn't sell or this is already gone or this never moved. Um, you know, so I, it helps me to kind of know how to rotate my stock better. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. That's cool. That's cool. Okay. So, but that's not, it, it's not a big, it's not a big, big issue. So when do you think that you think you may dive into that like five years, 10 years? Yeah, you know, if I do, if I decide to do something along, along those lines, I would imagine it would be in the next five years. Um, but, you know, it's just, but honestly, like it, I, I really could see me also like for me, another kind of downfall to doing that, like, yeah, I could take the steps and have my things available, more readily available for more customers in more places. But by doing that, I have less interaction with them. And that's for me, one of the best gifts of having my small business is, um, you know, so for me, if, if the thing that I like the most is those markets and those interactions, then I don't see how it benefits me to take that away from me, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll miss that. It's just like how I feel about, you know, um, 
like if I was to take money out of any, like if my if my living was paid for, what would I do, right? If my, mm -hmm. if my cost of living and food and things, yeah. what would I enjoy doing? And for yeah. me, it's you know volunteer, like any community work that I do, like I would, I don't mind serving elderly every day. With if I if I was paid for, you know, I wouldn't mind doing that. Doing art, if I was getting paid, but everything is paid for, I wouldn't mind doing that. So it's like it would take out the joy and I think that truthfully yeah. joy to do. Like if I if I say I can't do it without if I have to do it because I have to do it to, to work, then mm -hmm. okay, you know, I'm not I'm not really enjoying it. But if I don't if you take money away from everything, I gotta be able to enjoy it. If I can do that, that's what I wanna do. So Right. I, if, yeah. If they took that away, it's like, oh man, like I'm doing yeah, it, I'm not enjoying it. You know, I'm to <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So for me, like doing the markets, it's not a grind. I enjoy it. You know. Right. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, for if for me, that's kind of the reward for it. And so. I got you. I got you. Cool. Okay. So, um, with that, kind of, kind of, um, two more things. Two more things. Okay. So, uh, one of them is how important is it to not be bothered by certain criticism of your product like you know there's that you know what customers say <laughs> like with certain customers they say uh, i yep. don't like this or whatever because but you know like those, those types of criticism to your product like how how important is it to take it in or mm -hmm. you know did you like not accept it or get mad like how how were you yeah. when they first yeah. happened I exactly two things stand out for me. <laughs> two instant, two interactions. One, somebody tried. Remember, I was telling you, apple butter was the very first thing I ever made. And apple butter is basically where you take apples and you add spices and you cook it down until yeah. it is gone. Like it's you cook it down, down, down. It's yeah. very like intensely flavored. Um, and I let so really early in, um, I was at an event, one of my earlier shows, and somebody tried it, tried my apple butter. Which, by the way, the this recipe's won a blue ribbon at the county fair for three years in a row. Like this wow. stuff is good. Like I, yeah, 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 yeah. but but not everybody's gonna like everything, and I get that. But but this lady tried some and she, for real, she was like, she just kind of was like, it just tastes like applesauce, you know, like, I mean, oh, she just, and it was, and like on one hand, like, I mean, I still remember it, but like, yeah. so on one hand, I'm like, like, how dare you? And then on the other hand, I'm like, you know, but, but then on the other hand, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, it basically does. It does. I mean, I kind of describe it as um, like applesauce on steroids is how I describe it now. Uh, but, but then like an, at another time, a lady had come by my booth and she was looking at everything and um, she was checking every flavor out, just really like, like looking at all the, all the, like looking at all the labels. And then you know, I'd let her know that I had uh, at the time, I, right now because of COVID, I'm not doing sampling. Uh, I'm not letting people yeah. try anything. It's just, it's just not safe right now. So, uh, but normally I have everything available for tasting. And so I let her know, like, you know, I have, I have everything available to taste. If you see a flavor that looks interesting, you know, yeah. something you want to try. And she's like, no, I don't eat sugar. And so like, I mean, and she said it was such like, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, it wasn't like, oh, you know, it wasn't at all like, I mean, not, not that she owes me an apology for that, but she was just so like bold in it. Like I don't eat sugar. And so and I, for real, something about it, like, absolutely. Like I'm, I'm usually it's not to say that I'm usually like even keeled. That's not, that's actually not really a good way to describe me, but it just like caught me. So like, like it was so backhanded somehow. And so I was like, then I for real said something along the lines of then, then you won't find anything here for you. <laughs> like, because all of them have sugar. Um, you know, I mean, she could have been looking for someone else and I don't know, but I for sure like did not <laughs> respond well to her comment. And uh, like, I feel badly about it now, but it did. So it took, I was taken aback uh, by that. But yeah, you know, definitely like sometimes people will, people have opinions and they're, they're allowed to, you know, people will, you know, you know, but why don't you use organic sugar? Because it's expensive. You know, like I will, you know, if you want, if you would like me to make you a batch of something and do, have it made with organic sugar or coconut sugar or, you know, any other kind of thing, you like, I will, if, as long as it's food safe, these are things I can accommodate for yeah. you. But, uh, you know, for you know, but for the, for, for the general, everybody, like, you know, if a table sugar is good enough for your breakfast cereal, it's good enough for your jams and jellies. <laughs> so, you know, so like definitely people, you know, they have their opinion and they're entitled to it. Um, you know, some people will come and 
oh yeah, my mom, my mom does this too. Or my mom used, my mom used to do this too. And well, you know, what I take away from that is, you know, she used to like, she doesn't now and yeah. that's okay. You know, like these things are, are you know, crafts are hard. Yeah. Um, handcrafted things are hard. Um, you know, people will tell you that, you know, like kind of like, I'm sure that you've heard, for, you know, for your art, like, you know, that it's, yeah. oh, you know, like, I'll let you do it for free for me or, you know, like, oh, that's expensive for what you do. And it's like, mm, you know, like, it's like, yeah. yes, because my time has value, you know, yeah. and that's, yeah. you know, and that's okay, you know, like, and, and so like being comfortable with your own value mm -hmm. and not getting upset if other people don't appreciate your value, I think is an important part of, um, I think being a business owner, like, you know, like I, obviously I think that what I have is good enough to put it out there for other people to enjoy. Other people, other people support my opinion of, of this product by buying it. Right. So if, if occasionally a person doesn't enjoy it or doesn't like the outcome, that's okay too. Like you, we can't be all things to all people, but it's not a personal attack against me. Right. So. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, I completely agree because it's like always, like if you undersell yourself, you'll always be like underappreciated. Like you'll always feel underappreciated. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Put your price, set your price, leave your price where it's at. Don't try be to be strong about it. Be yeah. strong, be firm about it. Cause like with my art, like there's some people, like I, I know my audience. So I know Kissimmee is not a big art buying city like New York mm -hmm. or Miami. Mm -hmm. So there's people up there who actually collect art. So when I mm -hmm. price, when I do certain arts, I'm not, I'm not making huge art pieces for people to see. Those clients that I'm making huge art for, is in Atlanta or you know New Orleans or cities who actually buy art. So you know, but I, I when it comes to casino, I'm like, well, hey, um, <laughs> I don't know if you want to get that. Be like, that's a piece you may not that that size campus you may not want that. And you want this size? Because I'm gonna charge you base. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you out because casino is my hometown. Like you know, so yeah, it's all love. You've been supporting me before that, and the fact that you want to support, I love it. You know, I appreciate that in totality, but. These sizes, this is this is what the price is. And I don't want to kill your pocket unless you really want to get into the art investment and how that business works. And I'll tell you about that if you truly want to do that, how you can actually flip the piece, you know, as in selling copies and stuff like that. But uh, but no, yeah, I always I found I found out like early I used to like help people out, like, hey man, let me get the discount. Hey, let me Yes. Yeah, sure. Like and I, in my head I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah, cool, but then like growing up, like when my parents and my father, he's an entrepreneur as well. He he does his own um he does upholstery, he fixes furniture and stuff like that. So he has mm -hmm. a shop and everything like that. And he told me a lot, he's like, Man, you gotta you gotta charge for your time, you gotta charge for that. So he told me a lot about business. And uh one thing that I got from him and just my family here, my uncles, my aunts and everything, was they would buy my my shirts full price. And then, like, I had friends that were like, oh, man, let me get the discount. I'm like, man, hold up. I take a step back. My family, if anyone wants to get anything free, it would be my family. But right. they're playing for a price, so y'all should, too. And then that kind of instant, those, those scenarios mm -hmm. like that, maybe like, okay, I'm going to charge full price regardless. And if you truly, truly do support me, you're going to pay, pay me for a price at mm -hmm. least the first two, three, four times. And then I'm like, yeah, you know, um, come, uh, the, the current and common customers, yeah, okay, I'll give you a deal. Yes. You know, you're yeah, old. absolutely. But yeah, like you're, you're, you're absolutely right, man. You're absolutely right. Um, last question, or last, or I would just say, or question, last thing you would give, last three advice uh, would you give to someone who is between the ages 18 to, to 30, 18 to 30? Or in their twenties, I'll say someone who's in their twenties, they're just getting out of college. I have a lot of like young people in my in my in my audience. So, in college or a senior year in college, about to get out of college, and they don't want to work for nobody. They want to start their business. What is the uh, first few steps you think that they should do? You know, one of the things, that, one of the pieces of advice I always give to people who are in college, um, because you know, college a lot of times in college and um, you know, like when you leave high school and when you're entering college, people ask you what you want to do. People, you know, there's a whole lot of focus on what you want to be when you grow up. Yeah. Um, and what I always thought was interesting was nobody ever asks what you don't want to do when you grow up. And I think that is just as valid a question. Um, I <laughs> when, when I was in college, <laughs> when I was in college, 
I was took um, my my fields of study were sociology, psychology, and social work. Um, so I would end up in a, in a semester taking a lot of classes that were kind of thematic. So like I would take um, ad uh, juvenile delinquency and adolescent psychology and child development and you know like so all like youth classes or um, um, the, the the family through aging or the psychiatry yeah. or psychology of uh, geri geriatrics, uh, you know, so I would like, you know, take a, a semester at a time that were kind of based on themes, um, abnormal psychology, um, uh, criminal thinking, you know, so like, again, like, you know, like these, these semesters, a whole semester at a time where the topics were similar, but different. And what I learned pretty quickly about myself was that there were some things that I was that I was very interested in but also like pretty quickly it occurred to me like there are some things I don't want to do like there were some poppy I realized really quickly there were populations I never wanted to work with I don't want to work with children yeah. <laughs> I have never worked with youth <laughs> and because I figured out that that's something I don't want to do and like that's not like I can, so I think it's going to be important when you forge your way into the world, whether that is, you know, like a normal job, whether that is a small business, whether that is a, a technical education, um, you know, or a technical trade rather, um, you know, in whatever field you go in, I think it's important to know what is, is kind of a deal breaker for you. Like know the things that you don't want to do um, and trust that about yourself. I mean, and I'm not saying be closed off to possibilities, but when I was out and about and like, you know, I'd go on job interviews and I'd interview for job A and I'd go on the interview and, you know, I'd go on an interview for a, a program that was going to deal with, with adults and they would say, oh, you know, well, by the way, we have this position open that deals with adolescents mm -hmm. and, you know, I, like for, you know, like it's like, nah, man, like that's just not a population I've got. I don't have the temperament to work with. <laughs> so, so maybe no. <laughs> so just because an opportunity presents itself doesn't mean it's the right opportunity for me or, you know, it doesn't mean it's the right opportunity right now. Um, I've also been in a position where opportunities for promotions have presented themselves and I turned them down because it wasn't the right, it wasn't the right time. So I have interviewed for, um, you know, I'd interviewed for a promotion. It was, um, a, a, a big step up, but I realized that I still had so much to learn at the position I was in that I actually took my name out of consideration for it. And then later found out that I was in fact the like selected candidate mm -hmm. and, and then had to, you know, had to say like, I hope that this doesn't mean that other opportunities, you know, I, ho I hope other opportunities will still come my way when, um, you know, down when, uh, when I'm ready, you know, but I hope that I'm not shooting myself in the foot, but it just wasn't the right time. So I think that knowing the things you don't want to do is really important. And also being comfortable with the idea that like trying to know yourself enough that if you're not ready for something, be okay with that. Like be okay that maybe just because an opportunity is available doesn't mean you have to take it. Um, you know, so if, if you are able to go in a direction that works for you and learn what you can every step of the way. Like make sure that you really absorb the lessons being taught at, uh, at each step of the way. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. That's good advice. Actually. I, I, I truly agree in the, if you're not ready, don't. Cause you know, I, though a lot of people don't know, I was always a good drawer, but I started painting last year, this time last year. Oh, this, wow. Yeah. I only started painting this time last year. So a lot of people don't believe that, but like, yeah, I really just, started painting this time last year. My first painting was horrible. So I started, uh, <laughs> I practiced, uh, well, I read a book called Malcolm Golden, Golden, by Malcolm Golden, I think his name is Malcolm God. But basically, he created this whole 10,000 hour theory to where if you practice anything in 10,000 hours, you'll master it. So mm -hmm. um, that's what I did. Well, I, I was like, well, you know, I, I was always horrible at painting, but let me try and do it. Because I took one painting class my whole life, was in college when I got my bachelor's and I sucked at it. I was horrible. I was like, I'll never touch a painting again. So that's the only time I ever painted and I gave up because I wasn't good at it. I was only a drawer. I wanted to be a cartoonist. I was like, yeah, growing up in Kissimmee, I wanted to draw for Disney and Universal and that was mm -hmm. kind of like my goal. Um, but now, you know, I did the, uh, I started painting, but I knew the first six months, my paintings weren't, it weren't like, I knew like, you'd be like, oh yeah, can you paint this for me? I'm like, yeah, I, I, no, I can't. You know, I can. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going to <laughs> ruin your face on this camera. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, yeah, I'm like, I, I could draw it for you. I'm like, I'd rather draw it for you because I know I mastered my drawing. 
technique, but I can't paint it. Not yet. I was like, just wait. But, you know, of course, I could have tried. Well, yeah, give me your money. And I attempt, and you might like it. You might not. Mm -hmm. I just knew when, like, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Yet. And then now, like, this year, I made my first one was probably, like, my first one was probably in February to where I felt like, yeah, I'm confident I could do. I did, like, three of me. The first one, I looked ugly. The second one, I looked okay. Then the fourth, third one, I like, <laughs> that looks like me. <laughs> so, you know, once I figured out how to do it, like the whole facial features and painting it, then I'm like, okay, now it's time for me to go ahead and accept. And I know I, I'm confident in myself I can do a good job every single time. So mm -hmm. I think that knowing that and not being too eager to like accept everything and being able to perform at your top level or best mm -hmm. level is, mm -hmm. is key to know. So that's great advice. Um, so, you know, I, we've probably been on, I don't know how long we've been on, probably about an hour now, I'm assuming. 45. Yeah, probably. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 7, 7, 7.16, so, so that's it. Um, but time probably we have a good conversation, you know, I always have it like that. Um, but before you go, of course, um, can you please tell them how, how to follow you on social media and also your business website? And anything like that, all your all your contact information. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. The best way to reach me is um, through my business, um, Shelly's Jelly's Facebook page, um, which is um, it's the it's Shelly's Jelly's. Uh, if you go to Facebook and you wanted to actually use the www, that it's uh, <laughs> www.facebook.com slash Kissimmee Jams is that's that is the, um, the, 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 I tried like Osceola, that wasn't an option. I tried Shelly, that wasn't an option. So I had to kind of get mad creative with, um, how to find me. But if you, um, look for my Facebook page, then the, um, what comes up is this, my little, um, cartoon image of me, which is shockingly spot on. So, <laughs> so that's, I like that. I know it's really and those are the hair colors. That's the hair color I, I actually was sporting for a, a couple of years. I just recently switched it up to kind of purple and gray, but yeah. uh, I've been pink, uh, different versions of pink and red. So if you pulled me up, then that's what you will see on my Facebook page. So that's how you know you've got the right Shelly's jellies, and um, and that's the best way to reach me. And you can message me. Um, I tend to. Right now, it's summertime, so summertime is kind of the slow season in Florida for farm markets. The rest of the country, this is when they're really gearing up and they're busy, but in Florida, it's too hot, so most of them are a little bit slower. So um, in the summer, I have been showing out at the Harmony Farm Market most, like every other week or so, and my Facebook page is um, has the information on where I'm going to be. I always post on there the, where you can find me and what day and what time. Um, so come fall, I'll probably be at a new farm market. I believe that, um, fingers crossed. And if the stars align, then, uh, Mick farms is going to be opening a new farm market, I believe. And, um, I'll be, hopefully they'll, when they make their selections, I'll be one of the vendors that will be joining them out there. Um, and so that, but that'll be like rolling up in fall like around September. So that's, uh, that's pretty much the best way to find me. You can certainly comment here and, um, and I can troll through the comments and, and, and answer, answer any questions to make any connections. Yeah, but then, uh, I'm going to tag, I'm going to tag her page. Also, I'm going to re-edit the, the caption tag her page. So it'll be on the page and in the comments as well. And Excellent. I don't know, I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of comments. And like I said, in the beginning of the video, I respond to them after I get off. Uh, I didn't get to finish, but- She's looking good though. She's looking good. I'm liking her hair. She got the, her quaffa is looking great there. <laughs> yeah, appreciate it. So, um, but um, once again, all my viewers, thank you for showing out and tuning in as you guys always do, guys and ladies. I appreciate you all. And I will see you, I think, uh, next, I got another show tomorrow. Maybe next day. I got all shows on, <laughs> but I'm gonna come to your shop sooner or later, and definitely gonna buy some jam. So uh, awesome! Come yeah. find me. <laughs> Peace and positivity. Have Take care.